while I was apart, I took the opportunity to clean it up a little bit. So this was a raised lip uh, that they hadn't bothered to weld. So I hammered that down flat and I, I bridged that gap. It's still a little rougher than I like, but it's really hard to get in there. And then this was an open joint. So I went ahead and welded that up as well so that, I don't know, at least it didn't have as much to go over. And then I took the sidewinder with the sanding pad and smooth this out some. I imagine it's been glued together more than once. So I used RTV blue because I thought it would let me pull it apart easy. If anything, it was on there harder than the silicone that I found it with. But regardless, it's done. It's got a little some bends in it and you know some I didn't do like that one and some I did like this one. So we'll work with what we have. This is going to be the bottom attachment point for the dust collector itself. So this is spaced up the proper amount. I'm going to use got pardon my helper. I'm going to use this coffee can here as the actual outlet spout. So the dust, my my six inch hose will clamp on here and always oh, upside down. But uh, I'm using this board here for the main reasons I use most things it's uh, handy so that is the proper off space from from my backer board this will then locate the bottom spout lock the whole thing in securely and then I'll build something for the top spout so what I need to do now is uh, double check these measurements cut this to size and get ready to bore a, a rather large six inch hole now we're set up to cut this with the fly cutter. We have uh, cross clamping down nice and tight in the big radial arm drill press. So uh, yeah, it's a touch overkill. If anything goes wrong, it's going to eat that fly cutter for lunch. Deep as my fly cutter goes, flip her around, do the rest. Do we need some glue? Show the wood broken. Why? Where'd it break? Right there? Right there. Oh. What we're going to glue is this into there. So I've got it just on a sheet of metal, protect the tabletop from the, the moisture. I got some wax paper down inside. Nice tight fit. And so I'm going to use the expanding polyurethane glue. I'll put a bead around this edge. As it expands, it'll lock in place. It'll grab on this lip. It'll grab with the plywood roughness, tightness, stickiness, glueiness. It'll hold her nice and firm. And then that will become. You hear the train, bud? Yeah, that will become the bottom mounting point and it'll become the output chute of the dust collector. So there we got our bead there. So that glue will expand, filling the void, sealing between the two. So Buckaroo and I, you say hi? Hi, I'm cutting. You're cutting? Okay, show us all your cutting. Oh, nice work cutting. Buckaroo and I are just going to pile some massive amount of weight on this, keep it all nice and steady, and we're going to go inside and hope the heck that this glue will still harden and set up at 
40 degrees or whatever it is in it, it is in here right now here it is glue is dried it has four small screws pins really pinning it to the flange I've gone ahead and with some waterproof glue I've gone a little bit across the top and each of my screw holes I've got uh, glue down inside them so that'll help hold all the plywood layers together this is inch and a half yeah inch and a half plywood little chunk I had so now holes are drilled just gonna attach it there it is bolted on now I just got to get the blower uh, positioned cut the hole for the exhaust port and then mark and drill the ring holes Here you can start to get a look at the finished product as to what it'll actually be like. I need to center this in the opening, drill mark my holes. I could have drilled and marked them first. I, I wasn't sure if I could get everything set right, so I did it this way, right or wrong or indifferent. At which point I'll then come across and I'll grab the top in two spots and then we will brace from here up. You are cutting. I'm still not convinced it's a good idea, but here's the little man's first hand tool. Wah! Watch the fingers. We gotta be careful, okay? There it is mounted. After uh, looking at some systems online, no one ever has the top attached. So, at least for the moment, I'm not going to have it attached either. And we'll see if, if it's a vibration issue or, or something. The ductwork will be pretty darn tight, so it'll have some support up there. To prepare the solder selector for its outside life, um, I've gone ahead and run a, a, a bit of silicone around this rolled seam. I mean, it looked tight, but there'll be standing water up here on occasion and so you know standing water in vacuum it it pull something through a pinhole leak that in a regular shop would probably plug with dust over time well mine won't so I've done that and then once again I've taken the motor apart the fan apart and rotated it it's like the fifth time so hopefully that'll work every time I uh, picked a spot and measured it out I found out I hit something so this one finally does work and I'll just come directly sideways off the thing and call her a day so there it is installed I went ahead and uh, modified the installation in that I remote mounted the blower just uh, just to further isolate for vibration and noise and stuff, and it seems to work okay. It's uh, it was a bit of a trick getting it to seal, but it did seal, and I plugged the bottom, and I force-fed it huge handfuls of dust, made it choke it down, and uh, I got a little puff of just the finest, finest stuff out the top, but it was it was very minuscule. It'd be, for instance, far less than running the table saw for. Uh, a cut or two so um, and of course as soon as I shut it off uh, my my blocking plate and all the dust fell out of it so it's working it's working it's wired and it's just a matter of finishing the ductwork now I am going to have some problems with uh, water blowing on it, so I'll have to take and extend that overhang. <laughs> 